This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information and to find out how to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Marion Brown, Toronto, Canada. The Trimmed Lamp by O. Henry. The Badge of Policeman O'Roon. It cannot be denied that men and women have looked upon one another for the first time and become instantly enamoured. It is a risky process, this love at first sight, before she has seen him in Bradstreet, or he has seen her in curl papers. But these things do happen, and one instance must form a theme for this story, though not, thank heaven, to the overshadowing of more vital and important subjects, such as drink, policemen, horses, and earldoms. During a certain war a troop calling itself the Gentle Riders rode into history and one or two ambuscades. The Gentle Riders were recruited from the aristocracy of the wild men of the West, and the wild men of the aristocracy of the East. In khaki there is little telling them one from another, so they became good friends and comrades all around. Ellsworth Remsen, whose old knickerbocker descent atoned for his modest rating at only ten millions, ate his canned beef gaily by the campfires of the gentle riders. The war was a great lark to him, so that he scarcely regretted polo and planked shad. One of the troopers was a well-set-up, affable, cool young man, who called himself O'Roon. To this young man Remsen took an especial liking. The two rode side by side during the famous mooted uphill charge that was disputed so hotly at the time by the Spaniards and afterward by the Democrats. After the war, Remsen came back to his polo and shad. One day a well-set-up, affable, cool young man disturbed him at his club, and he and O'Roon were soon pounding each other and exchanging opprobrious epithets after the manner of long-lost friends. O'Roon looked seedy and out of luck, and perfectly contented, but it seemed that his content was only apparent. "'Get me a job, Remsen,' he said. "'I've just handed a barber my last shilling.' "'No trouble at all,' said Remsen. "'I know a lot of men who have banks and stores and things downtown. Any particular line you fancy?' "'Yes,' said O'Roon, with a look of interest. "'I took a walk in your central park this morning.' I'd like to be one of those bobbies on horseback. That would be about the ticket. Besides, it's the only thing I could do. I can ride a little, and the fresh air suits me. Think you could land that for me? Remsen was sure that he could, and in a very short time he did. And they who were not above looking at mounted policemen might have seen a well-set-up, affable, cool young man on a prancing chestnut, attending to his duties along the driveways of the park. And now, at the extreme risk of wearying old gentlemen who carry leather fob chains and elderly ladies who, but no, grandmother herself yet thrills at foolish immortal Romeo, there must be a hint of love at first sight. It came just as Remsen was strolling into Fifth Avenue from his club a few doors away. A motor car was creeping along foot by foot, impeded by a freshet of vehicles that filled the street. In the car was a chauffeur and an old gentleman with snowy side-whiskers and a scotch plaid cap which could not be worn while automobiling except by a personage. Not even a wine agent would dare do it. But these two were of no consequence, except perhaps for the guiding of the machine and the paying for it. At the old gentleman's side sat a young lady more beautiful than pomegranate blossoms more exquisite than the first quarter moon, viewed at twilight through the tops of oleanders. Remsen saw her and knew his fate. He could have flung himself under the very wheels that conveyed her, but he knew that would be the last means of attracting the attention of those who ride in motor-cars. Slowly the auto passed, and if we place the poets above the autoists, carried the heart of Remsen with it. Here there was a large city of millions, and many women, who at a certain distance appear to resemble pomegranate blossoms. Yet he hoped to see her again, for each one fancies that his romance has its own tutelary guardian and divinity. Luckily for Remsen's peace of mind, 
there came a diversion in the guise of a reunion of the gentle riders of the city. There were not many of them, perhaps a score, and there was wassail and things to eat, and speeches, and the Spaniard was bearded again in recapitulation, and when daylight threatened them, the survivors prepared to depart. But some remained upon the battlefield. One of these was Trooper Oroon, who was not seasoned to potent liquids. His legs declined to fulfill the obligations they had sworn to the police department. "'I'm stewed, Remsen,' said Oroon to his friend. "'Why do they build hotels that go round and round like Catherine wheels? They'll take away my shield and break me. I can think and talk consecutively, but I s stammer with my feet. I've got to go on duty in three hours. The jig is up, Remsen. The jig is up, I tell you.' "'Not so,' said Remsen. "'You see mounted policeman O'Roon. "'Look at your face. "'No, you can't do that without a glass. "'But look at mine, and think of yours. "'How much alike are we? "'As two French table de haute dinners. "'With your badge, on your horse, in your uniform, "'will I charm nursemaids "'and prevent the grass from growing under people's feet "'in the park this day. "'I will have your badge and your honour. "'besides having the jolliest lark I've been blessed with since we licked Spain. "'Promptly on time the counterfeit presentment of mounted policeman O'Roon "'single-footed into the park on his chestnut steed. "'In a uniform two men who are unlike will look alike. Two who somewhat resemble each other in feature and figure "'will appear as twin brothers. "'So Remsen trotted down the bridle paths, enjoying himself hugely.' So few real pleasures do ten millionaires have. Along the driveway, in the early morning, spun a Victoria drawn by a pair of fiery bays. There was something foreign about the affair, for the park is rarely used in the morning, except by unimportant people who love to be healthy, poor, and wise. In the vehicle sat an old gentleman with snowy side whiskers and a scotch plaid cap, which could not be worn while driving except by a personage. At his side sat the lady of Remsen's heart, the lady who looked like pomegranate blossoms and the gibbous moon. Remsen met them coming. At the instant of their passing, her eyes looked into his, and but for the ever-coward's heart of a true lover, he could have sworn that she flushed a faint pink. He trotted on for twenty yards, then wheeled his horse at the sound of runaway hooves, the bays had bolted. Remsen set his chestnut after the Victoria like a shot. There was work cut out for the impersonator of Policeman O'Roon. The chestnut ranged alongside the off-bay thirty seconds after the chase began, rolled his eye back at Remsen, and said in the only manner open to policemen's horses, "'Well, you duffer, are you going to do your share? You're not O'Roon, but it seems to me if you'd lean to the right, you could reach the reins of that foolish, slow-running bay.' "'Ah, you're all right. O'Roon couldn't have done it more neatly.' The runaway team was tugged to an inglorious halt by Remsen's tough muscles. The driver released his hands from the wrapped reins, jumped from his seat, and stood at the heads of the team. The chestnut, approving his new rider, danced and pranced, reviling equinely the subdued bays. Remsen, lingering, was dimly conscious of a vague, impossible, unnecessary old gentleman in a Scotch cap, who talked incessantly about something, and he was acutely conscious of a pair of violet eyes that would have drawn St. Pyrites from his iron pillar, or whatever the allusion is, and of the lady's smile and look, a little frightened, but a look that, with the ever-coward heart of a true lover, he could not yet construe. They were asking his name, and bestowing upon him well-bred thanks for his heroic deed, and the scotch cap was especially babbling and insistent. But the eloquent appeal was in the eyes of the lady. A little thrill of satisfaction ran through Remsen, because he had a name to give which, without undue pride, was worthy of being spoken in high places, and a small fortune which, with due pride, he could leave at his end without disgrace. He opened his lips to speak, and closed them again. Who was he? Mounted policeman O'Roon. The badge and the honour of his comrade were in his hands. If Ellsworth Remsen, ten millionaire and knickerbocker, 
who had just rescued pomegranate blossoms and scotch cap from possible death. Where was Policeman O'Roon? Off his beat, exposed, disgraced, discharged. Love had come, and before that there had been something that demanded precedence, the fellowship of men on battlefields fighting an alien foe. Remsen touched his cap, looked between the chestnut's ears, and took refuge in vernacularity. "'Don't mention it,' he said stolidly. "'We policemen are paid to do these things. It is our duty.' And he rode away, rode away cursing noblesse oblige, but knowing he could never have done anything else. At the end of the day Remsen sent the chestnut to his stable and went to O'Roon's room. The policeman was again a well-set-up, affable, cool young man who sat by the window smoking cigars. "'I wish you and the rest of the police force and all badges, horses, brass buttons, and men who can't drink two glasses of brut without getting upset were at the devil,' said Remsen feelingly. O'Roon smiled with evident satisfaction. "'Good old Remsen,' he said affably. "'I know all about it. They trailed me down and cornered me here two hours ago. There was a little row at home, you know, and I cut sticks just to show them. I don't believe I told you that my governor was the Earl of Ardsley. Funny you should bob against them in the park. If you damage that horse of mine, I'll never forgive you. I'm going to buy him and take him back with me.' Oh, yes, and I think my sister, Lady Angela, you know, wants particularly for you to come up to the hotel with me this evening. Didn't lose my badge, did you, Remsen? I've got to turn that in at the headquarters when I resign. End of The Badge of Policeman O'Roon